Cool. Boys, it's a pleasure to have you here. Appreciate you coming down. I know you boys can be busy in your shops. Um, Paradigm and all that, smashing it. Um, I w- had a question for the two years. Obviously, Dino, I wanted to start off with you. I think we, we've known each other quite quite some time now, done a few shows and all of that stuff together. Um, Ed Brown, pleasure to meet you today. Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> um, one question I had for you, Dino, bro, was because um, I know you've been cutting hair for quite a while. I know you've had you've got a chain of shops now, and you've had a few shops before. Um, I was really interested in finding out how you got started as a barber and what steps you took and what advice you would give in that aspect as well. Yeah, definitely. So um, yeah, it's a good question, actually. Um, I started barbering. Um, cutting my cousin's hair, really. Um, I was an accountant before that. Really? So, yeah. Didn't even know that. You would never guess, it? No, never. No. no. You're too childish yeah, to do the accountant. Childish, it? <laughs> nah, having fun. Um, so basically, I was doing accountancy, studied accountancy. Um, I actually liked it in college, but when I went into the job, it's a different story. Yeah. Um, so I went there, uh, done the job, hated it. On the weekends, I was going to cut my cousin's hair. So I was like, hmm, this is, I like, I like this. Okay. Because it was exciting to give a nice haircut and the feeling that I gave to him. Were you normally giving him haircuts out regularly or was it just a once off? It just happened while I was doing accounting. One day he just wanted a haircut um, and we, we were actually going out and he wanted a haircut. And I just thought, do you know what? Fuck it. Let, I'll, me, do I'll, it. let me do it. And he was like, he was really hesitant. It was, it was not an easy thing to do. And um, convinced him. And I just gave him a shape up the first time. Sick. Um, and do you know what? It w- I'm not going to say it was it was great, but it had shape to it. You know, it had yeah. it had the shape. It wasn't as sharp. I was using like a little Remington home kit. You know oh, what I'm saying? I still powered. use them. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, so it just kind of um, it kind of started from there, and then I got bored of my accounting job after a year. I just hated being behind the desk. It wasn't for me. Do you do your own accounts now or do you have an account? Definitely. Um, I think understanding your own account. And I think that's where a lot of people uh, go wrong. They don't understand their own accounts. Yeah. Um, And for a long time, I sat there spending hours on end trying to figure out what the best way of doing my accounts was for the shop and in the shop. You know, getting everything organized and understanding what was coming in, what was my expenditure every month. Um, and still to this day, I think Ed will agree with you. I'm very structured when it comes to Excel spreadsheets and yeah, yeah. And, and and the systems that we use um, yeah. to kind of collect the data. Uh, do, do you know what? That's it. Because um, Dinny, who's obviously normally on here with me, yeah. um, he, he rants and raves about that. I, I think a lot of barbershop owners, mm. um, they're not businessmen, they're barbers. And in order to collect data and structure your business correctly and on how to scale and expand, I think it's important. So seeing you be you doing that, yeah. obviously you're a successful barber, obviously one of the best in the UK as well, I would say. Um, Thank you. I think it shows a lot of intelligence in what you're doing and it shows in the work as well because a lot of barbers just think, yeah, I'll open a barber shop, shop and make loads of money and scale yeah. rather than having a solid foundation. I think I think so. I think not not a lot of people understand what's going on behind the scenes. Yeah. They see this money coming in, don't know about taxes, don't understand how to increase um, credibility within banks. Um, I think a lot of people just think, okay, how do I save for the next shop? Don't pay my taxes. Um, and I see a lot of shops doing that at the moment. Mm. Um, and a lot of people do pay their taxes, but I, I do know... Uh, a lot of people don't just by the prices they charge you yeah. can tell it doesn't make sense to the rent they're paying you know yeah and yeah and from the outside in you can see that and it's obvious but these are 10 pound haircuts yeah 10 pound 15 <laughs> like yeah. there, there are a lot of shops that can get away with that and depends on depending on the area but yeah i don't think you're looking for normal high yeah. street nah yeah you, cool. you can't run a shop on a high street charging 15 pounds how much do you charge in paradigm so it depends on the service. Um, we try to keep it as simple as possible yeah. because we don't want to com- confuse Complicate, the clients. Yeah. Um, so it, it, we we charge anywhere from 25 to 30. It depends on the rank Stop, of the yeah. barber, uh, the stylist. Um, 
we, we like to stay away from bar because we don't believe that we're a barber as such. Yeah. We believe we cut hair, you know? Yeah. Um, I think barbering is, is a great term for someone getting into the business. But yeah. as you start to learn hair, we style the hair more and more. So it's, it's more of the styling of hair and understanding the image of the person yeah. that's walking through your door. That's the most important. A barber doesn't generally think of that. Yeah. Um, so I think the term stylist or hair cutter for me is is the right term to put on. I agree. What we do and what you teach as well, because yeah. at, at the moment I've we've spoken about this. There's a guy called Ali in Ali, uh, yeah. Paradigm, Ali, which who's done our courses yeah. and started with us. And to be fair, I've I've seen a higher quality of of your education compared to the t- alternatives out there. So yeah. for me, I think. Like, again, I would call yourself uh, a stylish training service runner. <laughs> <laughs> you know? and I, know, I, like I know that. Like, do you know what? I think, I, like know, that. I, th- I think it's such a simple thing, but I think a stylist for me is is more than a barber. Yeah. And I think you teach that and you yeah. guys teach that. I don't think you're just a barbering. Well, well but it's, it's one of them. You can't, you can't expect people to understand hair by just teaching them how to pick up a pick the top up on the head Definitely. and start sweeping, like in in order for them to understand how hair works logically, it needs to be broken down in steps, like sectioning with a profile line, horizontal, vertical yeah. sections, graduation, um, and I think that's what does help. Don't get me wrong, there's some students. Um, they do come in and they don't have a work ethic and they don't want to understand it, but that's down to them. But people like Ali. Like he came in and he smashed it. Like all of our team talk about him to this day. Yeah, and, and we're so happy to see that he's gone to a shop like Paradigm, okay. which is well known in the industry. Thank you. Yeah, no, we're 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 very happy that he's come to us. He's a very good uh, person. We we hire people as as I've spoken with Ed loads of times. We've spoken about it a hell of a lot. We we do believe in people rather than the actual talent yeah. of the stylist. Yeah, you know, we we can teach. We that's what we do. We, yeah. we we're, we're we're teachers as well, yeah. more of a of an advanced level. Probably not, the best in the UK, yeah. I'd say as well. Oh, thank you. Um, but it's for 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 us, it's about the people. Yeah. Um, and the environment. We can teach people, but we can't teach someone to be a good person. Yeah. That's yeah. that's something that's taught throughout their lives. Exactly, and I think like it, that's very important with hiring staff as well because you need someone who not only respects themselves, but is gonna respect your business. Because if they can't respect your business and they don't see the vision, how is your business gonna go anywhere if you have people who don't don't wanna show care for it and have that nature about them? Um, um, I, I get that. I, I think it, everyone has to fit in as a family. Yeah. Um, and I think if you don't fit in as a family member, then for us, you can't have a complete family. You know, you're going to have yeah. arguments in a family. Always. You're not going to get on with someone. Always. But we always get together at the end of the day. We have our food together. We, we go out together. We have fun together. You know, every day we have unbelievably uh, a lot of fun. Like, it's, 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 it's amazing. Like, we have a ping pong table now. We're playing Fucking ping pong after. I want to come work in your shop. Like, it's, 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 <laughs> we, we try to create a culture where everyone can have fun. It's not all about work. It's about yeah. enjoying to cut hair and enjoying the environment that you work in. Yeah. You know? That's that's quite sick. I like that. Um, Ed, mate, you haven't been cutting hair that long, but you're yeah, sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, what's, your, what's your backstory? Because we've only met today, bro. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's quite an interesting one, actually. Um, so, I came across... I actually got a hair transplant. Um, okay. Got sort of frustrated with going down to local barber shops, not really understanding hair, and just just getting sort of the fringe taken right off. And yeah. you come out, and you think, "Fuck me, I'm I'm done here." Um, so kind of go out tonight. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. So going home and sort of doing. I remember like even getting like you know like razor blades and just like combing them down on top of my head, just trying to take dents out like random really stuff. Like I did. Yeah, genuine. <laughs> like, genuine. I just pick out like, you know, one pound razor blades that you buy and you get like a pack of 10 or something and I just be like combing with my fringe. like The prison all, shaper. All sort of literally, like, <laughs> terrible. And then um, <clears throat> sort of just got interested in cutting hair and 
I was so so I've been a professional rugby player for ten years. Sick. Um so basically obviously got like forty lads who all want haircuts every yeah. weekend and sort of just got interested <laughs> in it, started doing one person, then the next person, then the next thing you know, like sort of you're doing five haircuts a day after training. Um, Sick. kind of enjoyed like I enjoyed cutting hair, but I also enjoyed the environment of getting to know people on like a one to one basis. Maybe there's a new guy joining the team or a younger guy that Maybe I don't have a lot in common with them on the surface, but you get chatting to them and you find out about them as a person that I really enjoyed that aspect of yeah. it. Um, so what I did was I sort of I didn't charge the boys. I just sort of said that any donations would be would be great, and I actually saved up a, a bit of money to go on a on a course. Um, went on a course, and that's when I actually met Dino. Oh, sick! Um, what what course was that? So it was a men's spy course. Sick. Yeah. Cool. Um, so came on this course um, and actually. It did. We had to like introduce each other, you know, introduce yourself, how long you've been in the industry for and things like that. And out of about eight people, I was the only one who wasn't even in the industry. Um, really? Yeah, and I think that sort of just sparked up a bit of like a relationship with me and Dino at lunch. We started chatting about it and he was like interested in what I was doing and what why I was even here and how Same. I got into here. And then we, yeah, we kept in contact like briefly on social media and things like that. And then I fanboyed him in Barcelona. Um, <laughs> I, was, I was with my brother Stag dude. What, you followed uh, around? D- Dino was <laughs> shot, surprisingly staying in the W Hotel. Um, so yeah, he was Were chilling. you staying in the same hotel? No, nah, no, nah, I just snuck in. I was with the Stag dude, so we just we <laughs> snuck in. Um, but uh, yeah, when I chatted to Dino, he didn't really recognise me for the first few minutes, I don't think. And then I bet he, he, I bet he pretended it. who you were. Yeah, he did. He went yeah, yeah I remember you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he pretended to, 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 yeah. to, to be fair. <laughs> I'm actually very good with faces. <laughs> when I first met him, he didn't have a beard, yeah. all right? Yeah. Didn't have any hair, yeah. all right? He came I was picking with, my head at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He, 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 he had a full head of hair and, and a beard. And, and a beard yeah, and yeah. a massive beard. So, like, and sunglasses on, if I'm yeah. not yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I, didn't yeah I wouldn't recognize yeah. as well, to be fair. Fucking hell. So we we started just chatting a bit and things like that, and then I actually spoke to Dino about going. I I came to Paradigm for a course, Sick. um, like probably a couple of months before the lockdown, the COVID stuff all started. Yeah, maybe like three or four. It was January, wasn't it? So I can't. I don't know. Something like that. So I came and saw Dino for a couple of days. Dino, Steve, and Elliot. Um, really, really, really good course. Um, and then I went back to still doing the rugby stuff full time. I thought, you know, I'd probably be playing rugby for another four, four or five years, and then. Just before COVID, basically the funding and the rugby got cut by 40% and then COVID happened. So rugby really? was like dying Flashed. out. Yeah, it was kind of, they offered us a part-time option. Um, and I just thought, you know what, like 27, I had, I had a little one on the way. I was like, this is the perfect time for me to- Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, man. Yeah. Um, this is the perfect time for me to jump into this. Um, and Dino actually, funny enough, put up a, this will go back to Dino speaking about employing people <coughs> and things like that. Dino put up a job advert, but the advert says, um, stylus of any calibre which you'll still see now when yeah, whenever I've adverts go out yeah. and things like that and I think that's a big talking point but um, I remember now I was like sat with my missus at like 10 o'clock at night and I was like I was like no way like, any calibre do you reckon I can message him and I felt like <laughs> I didn't want to be disrespectful and rude by messaging him because I yeah. never worked in a shop before and the level of work you know the Paradigm do I was like I can't Dino's you know, not like that though wouldn't be no, you, can t- no. you can tell by knowing him oh no 100% no. now I look at it now and I think maybe I wouldn't I'd like messaged him earlier, Soon, but um, yeah. yeah, messaged him, and then I was like sat by the phone for like a good hour and a half, and in Dino's fashion, it, like, it took him ages to give me a ring. I sort of texted him. You didn't take very long to reply. <laughs> so yeah, I was sat sat by the phone for ages, and then he rang me, and he was like, "Yeah, man, if you want it, it's yours." And I was like, "Oh no way!" And, like, and I sort of see. So I'm based. I was based in Tellington at the time, where we've now got this, the the other shop. Um, it's obviously a big commitment to you are in a paradigm there don't you yeah 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 so yeah me and Dino in the the, the, the shop in Tennington um, so yeah I went spoke to Dino was like look speech and this is big commitment and I said look now it's, yeah I'm coming like these are I'm still training these sort of times of rugby but every other time I'll be there yeah, um, and yeah I remember that first day was the first day back from lockdown and I think we did a 9 to 11.30 at night. And really? the, the, it was heels, busy then as well. My yeah. heels were bruised. Eh? And I thought, I don't know. I was like, I love this, but I was like, I don't know if my feet can handle this. Eh? I was, I was going to say, like, did that turn you off it a little bit? No, nah, no, nah, not at all, man. Like, you go, into, you go into Paradigm and watch what these guys are doing first Different hand. level. Like, it can't. Different it level. Can't, like, it, like, I've never experienced yeah. anything else, so I can't comment too much on that. It'd be out of place to do that. But you watch these guys work and, like, they are, like it, they are artists. Like, yeah. it's... 
um, just to watch them, man, was, yeah, uh, loved it. And you know what? Paradigm, you lot, like, um, your barbers that really do, t- no, stylists that really do, <laughs> <laughs> your stylists that really do take pride in your work. Um, and you can, you can see it across the board, like across the board, from whatever standard you do employ, everyone always gets up to your standard and whoever the main stylists are. I think the standards are very high there and for what you offer, absolutely fantastic. Um, and it, it shows across the board with all your team as well, um, which is hard to do because I've worked there, I've worked in like four or five barbershops in my, in my career and you get one sick, bar, one sick barber or stylist and then you get two a dodgy and then there's a shop owner who has all the clients sort of thing. And the shop owner tends to be like me, 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 all the clients, but doesn't want to spend time with the rest of the team that are going to bring more money in for the business mm-hmm. and bring more clients and obviously better their team as well to make them be happy where they are um, and progress themselves as well. So to see that in paradigm, I don't, I don't think there's a lot of barbershop chains and franchises that do that like you. Um, you. And the quality is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. Like, phenomenal. Um, what 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 made you choose the shop? Because I know you've had a cut a shop before Paradigm, and I know you've worked in a few different salons as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, what made you choose number one your shop? Because I know you got rid of that shop. Okay. Went into a different shop and then opened Paradigm. Like, what was going through your brain to make them choices? If that makes sense. So, and what advice would you give? So, uh, when I opened my first shop. Um, it was, and I'm not talking about Paradigm, it was a previous shop. I opened it when I was turning 20. So I started barbering at 19. Yeah. Um, at 20, um, I opened the first shop. Sick. Um, which was premature, to be honest. Um, <laughs> it wasn't a regret of mine, but I wish I spent more time in the shop. Yeah. Um, in, in the previous shop, I had a very good teacher. A uh, guy called Vass, an incredible, um, talented man, um, great teacher, great influence in my life, um, and <laughs> kind of left to do my own thing. And I had a business partner while doing it. Um, and was he a stylist as well? Or? Yeah, he was, he was a barber in the same shop that we was working at. Um, we kind of just left at the same time and then decided to, to open a shop after, which... Sick. Which was quite cool, um, to be fair, being that young and having a shop. Having like, a shop, yeah. Yeah. I wish um, I had one that young, yeah. but... <laughs> I mean, there's pros and cons to it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so then after a couple of years, I, I got bored. I just I, I just got stuck in this place of wanting to do more and not, not just... It wasn't about money. It wasn't about um, anything else. It was just... It was just boredom, Get going into the shop every day and, and being lethargic. Nothing was ta- changing in, in, yeah. in my environment. Um, everyone around me didn't really care about hair. Um, yeah. And then I, I chose to go uh, and sell the shop to go and educate and go and do new things um, in, in a different brand. Um, and then slowly, slowly um, built up my knowledge, uh, built my understanding of hair more. Um, but realized really I did have an understanding of hair in the first place. Yeah. I had a lot of, of, of knowledge of hair. You know what? It's funny you say that because so a lot of our students, I always tell them go do advanced education after they finish our course. Yeah. But I do tell them you're going to understand it, but you don't realize you understand hair until you go and get yourself into advanced education Mm -hmm. and learn from people who are passing that knowledge on like yourself. But they all say the same thing as like, I knew it. I didn't know I know it, but now I know it better. Yeah, yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I respect that massively. Yeah. So that was just it, and then we just opened uh, paradigm and the ideology of paradigm. Not yeah, but paradigm is not um, just a, a barbering brand, uh, a stylist brand, or whatever you like to call it. Yeah. It's 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 more of a place where men go to feel. <laughs> good about themselves yeah. it's, it's about a place where people can have fun it's a place that people can enjoy their time there yeah. and it's a safe haven for barbers out there yeah um or stylists or whatever you like to call yourselves yeah. haircutters it's it's more about i've i've worked in environments where 
barbers aren't really looked after. Yeah. Okay. Stylists aren't looked after. Haircutters aren't looked after. Why do you Why do you think? Because I know. Sorry to cut you off. I know there's a lot of barber shops, like ninety percent of barber shops, that don't know how to look after their staff. Why Why do you think that is? Selfishness. Fair enough. This is one word: selfishness. <laughs> Uh, I think being selfish uh, and not wanting other people to succeed. I remember being at at, at a shop, um, and it wasn't a shop that I worked for, but I was I was I was going to visit someone that I know, and the, the barber goes to me. Oh, I don't I, like you've got to be careful how much confidence you give someone because then they just go and leave and open their own thing. I was like. But if they want to do that, they're going to do that anyway. Yeah, exactly. Like, you can't stop someone living their dreams. That means that you should have stayed at the barbershop you first worked at and not moved on. Yeah. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't do that. So why do you expect someone else to do that? Yeah. Why don't you try and get that person to succeed in their life? And that will make you feel better about yourself. And the thing is, if if they're happy where they are and if you're looking after them, naturally they're going to want to stay. And if they do go off and open their own shop, Right. Fantastic. Correct. They're doing would, something for themselves. I would still help the person. Exactly. Because for me, that person gave me a lot, okay, gave the brand a lot, gave everyone around them a lot. Mm-hmm. So then you have to give that person back that much. And exactly. you might have given them already, but why lose a contact? Why lose, how can you be so close with someone and then suddenly bang, they're gone? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. That's the first, when I first joined Paradigm, but then the first week even, <clears throat> in that COVID time when like Dino was and all the stylists were like fully, fully booked. He put he took out an hour of his day, we went and crossed the road for a coffee and he sat down and he was like, What's your short term, medium term or long term goals? What do you want to do? Sick. And literally from that day, they were also Dino's goals for me to do them. You know, there was like little things during the day or whatever, like, how are you getting on with that? Do you need a hand looking at this? Like and when up some of those goals, you know, obviously it was like building up a clientele. Yeah. The first week or two, I naturally just had clients to cut because everyone needed a haircut and it slowed up. And I went to Dino, I was like, Dino, what do I need to do? And he was like, damn, go get cards, go give out free haircuts, go pick up people off the street. Like straight away, it became his goal his as well. Goal. Yeah, yeah, like from, from literally the start, which is pretty uh, special. Do you, do you know what? It's so sick to see because um, there's not a lot of barbershop owners like that. I'll speak to barbers all the time. And they're like, I want a raise, he won't give me a raise. I want to go off and do this. I want to open a shop with him. He doesn't want me to open a shop with him. I want to go off in my own shop, but he's holding me back. I need more money to do it, this and that. And bro, it's so sick to see because the, the only other person I know who's done that is um, one guy who helped me get to where I am in, in the industry, Zach, Zach Resonato. Okay. Um, he's the first person other than yourself who I've ever met who's been up, whatever you want to do, I'll help you do it. Your goal's my goal, like you said. Yeah, yeah. As long as you're happy, like at the end of the day, the relationship's more important than trying to keep someone in to make you look, to make, try and make you money, sort of thing. Um, How I, much do you respect him now? Oh, he's like a dad, he's like an older brother, dad, all all that. Like I've got so much respect for him, it's ridiculous. Like yeah. ridiculous. Like you can go, you can go to him with absolutely anything. Right, you need to do this, this, and this. Have you done it? Yeah, it's done. How'd it work? Perfect. Exactly. Done. Um, and it's so refreshing to see. Like it's mad. It's mad. Uh, it and a lot of people don't think like that. And it's so refreshing to see you boys are like that as well. Because sometimes you think, no, is there actually decent people in the world? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it's a very doggy dog world in in our industry and probably in every industry. But this is what we know. So yeah. this is what we see. You know. And the thing is, I think because there's not a lot of regulations in barbering as well, which you probably know. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people can just open businesses and think they can manage it how they want just because there's a lack of regulations. Yeah. Um, like you never hear of a HR in barbering, do you? No. Um, which is mad. Um, but I yeah. Think, I think I think that's a um, it's a good and a bad thing. I think. Yeah. If you did have to have a HR department in a barber shop, you would, uh, yeah, you would, you would. They'd be busier. They would be. Uh, <laughs> they would be busy. Uh, yeah, we, we actually have a joke, like right? uh, when everything goes wrong, uh, go and complain to HR. Yeah. So it's like, we actually have a joke because you can. Yeah. <laughs> you can you know? But I think, yeah, I think again, like 
if you I that's think, the good side of it yeah, as well i like that i mean you you can see the good bad and the, yeah. side, but the bad side i think hr is a is a good way to to escape the law yeah you know and i think in barbering there's no room to run yeah because they have to come to you yeah and it's like if they've got a problem go to hr yeah Sorry. but this is the point like when dino made at the start about employing decent people like yeah. it doesn't mean we're all the same and we all get on and and we're best mates with absolutely everyone. Like you have different relationships with everyone different in the group. People, but if yeah. you employ or bring the right, like people who have good morals and good values that you believe in and, and are true to yourself and the brand, if they come in and add their little flavor on top, yeah. that's when you get a nice mix. When you bring someone in and you can tell, okay, actually maybe they they might not be right for yeah. us. But those 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 are the kind of people that will then be wanting to go to HR and things like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you don't yeah, have that. Right. It's all you know when it's a family environment. Everyone just resolves yeah. it among themselves. The, the thing is, there's not. It's not like um, the brand is actually run by everyone. Yeah. Uh, and and I say that because we we have meetings, for example, about education, and yeah. it's like, <clears throat> and then we'll have meetings about the clothing, and then yeah. we'll have the meetings about how the shop should act and feel, and how getting a ping pong table would it be a good or a bad thing. And it's like we all sit down and make yeah. these decisions together. They're important and, decisions to make as well. They're, they're massive because it, it impacts everyone, not yeah. just and and not just one person. So that we're we're a big team that makes decisions, okay, together. together you yeah. know, there's a lot of decisions that are made, not by me. Like Ed, uh, in in the Teddington shop, has made his own decisions, okay, based on what he thinks is right. Yeah, and because he understands the brand, because there was no way that we would continue on doing another shop if Ed didn't understand the brand. Yeah. Okay. Of and we understood what it needed to be. Yeah. Okay. So that means like Ed can make his his decisions for himself. Because he knows the gear that their brand's going the Correct. direction the brand's yeah, he, going. Yeah. And I think each shop, you can't <laughs> open a shop and act the same way in every shop. That's not how uh, a brand should run. I don't believe that. Yeah. Um, and I know that you've got McDonald's that is uh, run every, the same everywhere, everywhere, but you're eating the same food everywhere. Yeah. It's a different. It's different when you're your different areas need different, different flavors. Areas they need different, yeah. different you know? styles. And especially what we're what the industry we're in, we're dealing with different people in different areas. Like you go to London, like central London, you're going to get a certain market. You go to um, where you're in North London, North London, exactly. And Teddington, and Teddington, you're going to get a completely yeah. different market. Cambridge, where we are now, yeah, completely different market. Bedford, where our other other academy is, the market's completely different, and the the team has to move with the market, sort of thing, in the different area. And I, I completely agree with that because it seems to work. Um, so yeah, I completely agree. I think you've got to yeah, you've got to keep some of the guidelines the same. Oh, of course, you yeah. Know? But then the the people, the interaction with people, they bring their own flavor. Okay, they you're, you're actually you're allowing the customer to kind of bring in their personalities, and yeah. you kind of cater to them. Yeah, exactly. You know, I believe that's a massive thing that people don't understand. Mm. And for me, it's like, and and for the brand, it's it's about being able to cater and we spoke about this a hell of a lot like yeah, yeah. cater for the it, client we've got to cater for the the environment the area you know you can't treat uh say for example someone in teddington the same way you would treat someone in north london yeah because you you say wagwan to a person in <laughs> in, in teddington they're gonna look at you like the, what what <laughs> yeah it's like what was that sir do you know what i mean yeah. so you've got to change yourself to, to the different clients you've got to be aware of who's coming in the in the door and that can also happen in the same shop different time of day yeah right. you know what i mean when you've got three boys in the chair and it's all fifa's going and whatever that yeah. it's all good crack but then when you've got two older gentlemen in the chair you can't be you can't really be banging yeah, on music's FIFA gotta be changing and things music. like that yeah, exactly. that's when we start going <laughs> <Just> calm down <laughs>